Now, 121 on Rule 23, we have look for price reversals when the tick and ticky get to extremes. And this, again, is uh, a confirmation of other things, but it's something that it's important to know about and to look at. When the ticky gets above, well, first let me define the, the tick and ticky. Uh, the tick is the, the T-I-C-K, is the number of rising shares on the New York Stock Exchange minus the number of declining shares, the difference. In other words, if it's plus 600, it means 600 more shares went up than down on the last tick or the last time they calculated it. The ticky is the same thing except on the Dow stocks, and there's only 30 Dow stocks. As a result, the extreme in the ticky is plus 30. The, uh, the, extreme, uh, is, it, the other extreme is minus 30. So what we're saying here is when the ticky gets up near a high extreme or a low extreme, uh, look to sell and, and buy. In other words, if it gets out of line, it'll probably go the other way. And the same applies to the tick. When it gets above 600 or 800, you want to sell. Or below minus 600 or 800, you want to fade these, these ratings, these readings. This is a good confirmation tool for time and price. Now, I'm not saying it's as easy as saying every time the tick gets high, you sell it. Every time it gets low, you buy it. I'm saying that if you see this, in addition to other confirmation things, in addition to time and price, then it's a good thing to look at it, and it gives you a little bit more confidence in what you're doing. Here's an example uh, on page 122. You get a high reading in the tick, and sure enough, it goes the other way. And at the bottom there, we've got the prices where it went from uh, roughly 70, over 71, uh, uh, below 70. Uh, this is the 69 area, really, the 70 area. Here again on 123, we've got a low reading in, in the ticky uh, down at minus 25. Remember, the maximum is minus 30 on the downside, and the, uh, the futures made a rally off of that. Uh, rule 24 involves a little mathematics. You need a calculator to do this. Uh, you take the intraday highs and multiply by key Fibonacci numbers to predict tops and bottoms. And again, this is an interesting uh, formula to use, calculation to use. Um, one of them is the 618. We use it in a slightly different fashion here. Uh, and the others are the 1.382 and the 2.236. These are the three key numbers. You take a range. You take an early morning range, whatever the range is, after a certain amount of time early in the morning and you multiply them out by these numbers. And uh, then you add or subtract to the highs and lows to get yet other highs and lows, hopefully, on the day. See, as the day develops, uh, going into the day, you know if you know your futures, uh, you know that it has a given range of whatever, 1,000, say, in the S&P, or 1,500 or 1,400. So if you have a two or three, 400-point range, there's a high probability that that range it's going to expand out by the end of the day. So the question we're asking here is, where is it going to expand to, and what are the prices going to be? Now, I've done the math here on 125. You've got a range of 530. That's the early range, remember, not the final. And, you get a, and I've got the high and low number there. And I multiplied it by these three. Uh, you multiply, for instance, just to do one, you multiply 530 by 1.382, and, and you, it rounds off to 730. Uh, you, you add it to the high, and uh, you get 964. You subtract it from the low, uh, you get 944.10. And then it's a question of marking these. Now, I, I actually sometimes either write it right on the screen, the number, or I write it down with pen and paper, uh, or I draw a line on, on the, uh, the screen. So now I've got projected highs and lows on, on page 126 uh, based on where it should go. And you turn over to 127, and you've got not just the intraday range, but where it actually went to. And you can see it went right to some of those targets right there. Uh, we had a, a 58.40, and that's where it went to. And remember, Prior to that, it hadn't gone anywhere near that number. On 128, 
um, we've got projected highs and lows. And then you turn over to 129, and you see the targets there. In this case, not only did it reach one target, it reached the second and even the third to the exact tick. So this is a very uh, uh, good thing to look at. The important thing here to remember is you've got to do these calculations during the day. Even though you may only be in the market 20 minutes or 30 minutes, it takes two or three hours of hard concentration to find these opportunities. And during those hours when you're not in there, you're doing these type of calculations and you have a whole list of numbers uh, written down or on the screen of your computer and you're looking at those numbers and and thinking this is where it should go, this is where uh, uh, the, the, the move should stop. Here again on 130 is another illustration of that. And you can do the math and work through it and see how I came up with these projected highs. This was a, a strange day because not only did it get some of the targets on the bottom, but it turned around, took out the highs, and got the targets on the top as well. well. Why did it go to these prices? Good question. Uh, 25 is a, is a simple rule, uh, but it's something you need to know if perhaps you don't, and that is you never buy limit down and you never sell limit up. Why does it go limit? It goes limit because there's too many buyers or sellers at that point overwhelming the other side and that's why they have the limits to slow down the trading to hope that some reason will enter in the market and, there, and it will trade back up. So if it goes limit down, it's down there for a reason, more sellers than buyers. You don't want to be a buyer there. It comes off limit, what will happen is it will immediately go lower and then it may snap back up. But don't buy it at limit down, buy it when it comes off limit and vice versa uh, on the upside. Here's an illustration of that on page 132. Uh, the market goes limit down, it can't trade. The reason it's trading up there is there are buyers coming in there. But look where they buy it. They buy it up at the 46 area and it's headed for 38 at the, on, the, on the downside. Typically it comes off limit, it'll break hard uh, to the downside or, or vice versa. Rule 26, uh, enter by averaging up or down within buy or sell consolidation zones and exit at pre-determined targets. Now, I've, I've mentioned this uh, and I think that it's fine to get in at different levels within these zones. You hear the saying, never add to a loser. Well, I add to losers all the time. If I'm selling, it's going against me, I'm averaging up. But only within these zones, not, not just anywhere in the same way with buying. I'm buying within the zone, and as long as it's in that zone, I'm okay. The second it slips out, the bottom stays uh, uh, at the bottom. I'm uh, uh, ready to get out. Um, here on 134 is an example of that. Uh, uh, you, can, you can buy more in the zone, and it, eventually it, it starts to work out uh, when it starts to go. The same thing on 135. We've, we've got a target buy. Uh, it breaks down and it finally gets there. Um, we're coming to the end of this segment here, so we'll, we'll uh, stop here and then we'll continue on.